It is extremely hard to become a neurosurgeon as the program stretches for more than a decade involving multiple medical degrees, years of intense study and difficult examinations. It takes between 13 and 16 years to qualify. It is undoubtedly one of the most difficult medical specialties, not to mention the job itself, as it deals with the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. Only a few have dared to take up this specialty, and among the brave is Dr. Sharon Soko, the only female neurosurgeon trained in the country. I have definitely always wanted to be a doctor. As far as I can remember, it holds a very dear place um, in my heart. Because in as much as I said I wanted to be a doctor, growing up I wasn't sure what sort of a doctor I wanted to be. But when I was 13, it just started Form 1. My mom had what we thought was a stroke and she couldn't talk, she couldn't walk on her side. You know, it's a pretty scary look for a 13-year-old at home with a mom who's like that, bedridden in bed. And she was otherwise fine the previous day and she just woke up like this. And so she was taken to Mtari General Hospital where examinations were done by doctors. And then in no time, we were told she was being transferred to Parrenyatwa in Harare. To us, that was bad news because it signified it's worse than we thought. And we were told that your mom didn't have a stroke, but she has a growth that's growing in her brain, what they called a brain tumor. She went for the operation. She came back. She was hemiplegic at first, but she came back. She could talk to us, slurred speech. She could identify us. She could touch us. To me, that was a miracle. And in my head, I'm like, this doctor is a miracle worker. And I was so interested in knowing what sort of a doctor he is. And that's when I was told these people are called neurosurgeons. So we managed to get my mom back. She came back home. She had rehabilitation for almost a year. But we were told that this tumor would most likely grow back because they couldn't remove all of it. Unfortunately, exactly after a year, the tumor did come back. And it was severe this time. But we were so hopeful. You know, she went at that time, she'll come back. She did go for this surgery. But unfortunately, she didn't make it this time. From a biochemistry degree and later on medicine, the 14-year journey to become a neurosurgeon had its own trials and tribulations, especially being the only female in a male-dominated industry. It's, it's an overwhelming feeling, honestly speaking. It, it can be intimidating at the start, but like I said, I was so determined to become a neurosurgeon. And so, like you said, a 14-year journey, five years of doing my undergrad, two years of internship, and then I did two years as an SHO in the neurosurgery department. It's one of the busiest. You hardly get people coming in to become senior house officers in neurosurgery because it's long working hours. But I knew that's where I want to be, and I wanted my mentors or the seniors in that field, the professors in that field, to know this is what I want and I'm willing to do the work that's required. I'm willing to put in the hours. So those two years, for me, they were an eye-opener to really understand what sort of world this was. Because when you're outside, you hear neuro is demanding, neuro is time-consuming, but you do not experience it firsthand. And in that time when I came, you meet testosterone all around you. It's men and men and men. And you are not talking about young guys. You're talking about elderly guys, those doctors you see, and they're respectable. And as I walked into that corridor, into that department, and I told Mr. Makarao, I would really love to come and do neurosurgery. Can you allow me a post as an SHO? He said, yeah, why not? come in and they were welcoming but being a girl in such a field it was a bit intimidating and when other doctors from other specialties would see you as an SHO in that field they would ask God they would actually ask you you why because it wasn't head of it wasn't common it was difficult but I told them this is what I wanted to do 
Dr. Soko says she owes her success to the government and her employers at Parinya to a group of hospitals. In the beginning, I wasn't able to come into neurosurgery the first year I wanted to come in because I do not have what they call a manpower development leave because I was officially employed by the government. So when you want to go and further your studies, they need to allow you a leave while you're still employed by the government, but you're allowed to go in and further your studies. So the government made it possible for me to have that manpower development leave. The minister at the time and our current minister has made it possible for medical professionals, even I think in the whole civil service, to be allowed that, that medical leave. Despite the long hours involved in neurosurgical surgeries and the long list of patients waiting to undergo such operations at public hospitals, Dr. Soko says she does not regret her choice of profession, specialty and place of work, as she believes it is her turn to give back to society. Abigail Tembo, ZBC News, Harare.